Welcome back to the channel, and for today's vlog, I'm going to go over two insane 1-3 match the stack sessions from Capital Casino just to show how ridiculous this week of poker was. It was filled with massive bomb pots, insane coolers, and honestly, pure luck. As per our new usual, we buy in for $500 and we arrive at 9.30 a.m. just in time for the start of a new game. And starting a new table only means one thing at Capital Casino, which is the famous $15 bomb pots. Only six people decide to join the party, so there's $85 in the middle, and we look down at Big Slick, Ace King Offsuit, on the button. The dealer puts out an Ace King Jack, two diamond flop, and we have ourselves top two pair on a very connected board. The small blind just says screw it and jams all in for $105, and now a middle position player puts in the call. Middle position player has about $180 remaining, so I think there's only one move, which is all in. The middle position player wastes no time in putting in the call, so let's hope for a good run out. But that's not what we get when... The dealer puts out the five of diamonds turn and the six of diamonds river, putting four diamonds on the board, and let's play the audio to hear my reaction to the run out. Chris Pine, Aye. Chris, are you still here? Aye. Chris Pine? Oh, diamonds. Wow. Are you here? Oh, you Can you believe these hands we got on the first hand? That's crazy. No diamonds, too. But somehow, our hand holds up against Ace Jack Offsuit, which has a worse two pair, and King Queen Offsuit for middle pair and a gut shot, and by some miracle, neither of them had a diamond. And just like that, we stack two opponents in just our first hand of the day. Maybe Chris, Ace, are you still here, Chris? Yeah. Ace King, I knew I was in the We move on to the literal next hand when we see one limp in early position. It gets folded to me, and I look down at red pocket eights and bump it up to $15. The action folds back to the early position limper, who now limp three bets to 45 total. He only has about $175 remaining after the three bet, so this is probably a fold on my part since we're not that deep and limp three bets are usually nutted, but folding is boring, so I decide to stick in the call. We go to a flop with $90 in the middle, and it comes out 866 with two spades flopping ourselves top boat. I just gotta ask Jim Harbaugh a question. Who's got it better than us? No way! Unfortunately, our opponent starts off with a check, and I think checking back would be a mistake even though we have the best hand. Since we're so shallow, I decide to throw out just $25 to hopefully induce a value raise with his overpairs, or his ace-king holdings looking to get me off a small pair. And that's exactly what we get when our opponent decides to check jam all in. I obviously snap call and turn over my hand right away to show our opponent the bad news. He tells me that he has pocket aces, so there's just two cards in the deck that we need to fade. Luckily, the turn and river are both low cards, and in just the first two hands of the day, I've already stacked three opponents. Did I do that? Did I do that? Let's see. Let's see. We played for three more hours this session, but unfortunately, nothing too noteworthy really happened after these two amazing hands. So as for results, we were into the game for the original $500 and out for $1,159 for a solid $659 profit. That brings us to our next session which is from Wednesday, February 21st, and the third straight day of playing poker this week. We start off with a $500 buy-in in the 1-3 match the sack game, and we get things started early on when we look down at ace-queen offsuit in the big blind. An action player opens the $15 in early position, a station on the button puts in the call, and I decide to 3-bet to $55. Only the original Razor puts in the call, so we're going heads up to a flop with $125 in the middle, and the flop comes out six, seven, eight, rainbow. I honestly hate this board because it favors our opponent's range way more, so I start off with a check and our opponent snap checks it back. The dealer puts out the two of clubs completing the rainbow, and if I bet now, I don't think our line would make sense, so I check again and our opponent checks again as well. The river makes things worse when the four of hearts comes out, giving any five a straight now. I check for a third time, and now our opponent snap bets $100. 
I just snap fold my holding and our opponent shows king queen of hearts and starts giving this speech how he knew what I had and that I'm a terrible poker player and all this other bullshit. So we take note of that and have officially acquired a target. 900 yards, wide spot on the road. On target. After failing a set mining operation and losing $45 with king 10 of clubs in position, we add on $200 to our stack to get more money on the table. In our next hand, we're playing another Capital Casino $15 bomb pot. Seven players decide to join the party, so there's $100 in the middle, and we get dealt 6-9 offsuit. The dealer puts out a 10-8-7 two-diamond flop, and we flopped ourselves the second nut straight. The action gets checked to me, and I throw out a $55 bet from middle position, and now next stack jams his short stack for $60. Our rival opponent from the first hand puts in the call on the button, and a solid player to my right also calls. I can't raise, so I put in the $5, and we go four ways to a turn with a nice juicy $340 pot. The turn comes out the 10 of clubs, putting two 10s on the board. This is either a really good card for me, because it gives someone who had top pair trips now, or a really terrible card since someone could have a full house. I guess there's only one way to find out, so when the player to my right puts in the check, I throw out a half pot bet of $170 and just our rival puts in the call. At this point, I'm putting him on a big diamond draw, a decent 10, or a slow played full house. So we're going heads up to a river with $680 in the middle and it comes out the queen of hearts. I'm feeling decent about this card since all the flush draws missed, but now queen 10, which could very well be in his range, makes a full house. This opponent has been very aggressive, so since I put him on a 10 or a missed flush draw, I want to give him rope to either bluff his missed diamonds or overvalue a 10. So I start off with a check and he snap jams all in. I put in the snap call and he shows jack 10 offsuit for trips. Hate to say it, not really, but that does not beat my straight. We take down a massive pot and double up our stack early on in this session. On target. Oh, scope. Fire when ready. Hit. In this next hand, the $6 straddle is on, and I open ace-king of clubs to $25 under the gun. We get a call from the early position player, the big blind, and the straddle. So we're going four ways to a flop with $100 in the middle, and the dealer puts out a queen-10-6 two-club board, giving us a royal flush draw. With all this equity, I decide to see bet $35, and just the straddler puts in the call. We're going heads up to a turn, which comes out the three of clubs, giving us the nut flush. He checks again, and now I need to decide on a sizing. I decide to target his queen X hands, and hopefully he made a smaller flush, so I size up a little and bet $125. But unfortunately, he snap folds. We take down a nice little pot to keep the momentum going. Thank you. There's no straddle on in this hand, and the end of the gun player limps. It folds to the button who raises to a massive sizing of $40. He's been a huge action player so far, and he has over $1,000 in his stack, so I decide to put in the call. I could be raising here, but honestly, I'm not too comfortable with ace-queen offsuit out of position. The under the gun player gets out of the way, so we're going heads up to a pretty good flop of ace-8-6 rainbow. I check in flow, and our opponent continues the aggression with a $50 bet. I put in the obvious call, so we go to a turn, which comes out the four of hearts, putting two hearts on the board. I check in flow again, and now he decides to check it back. I don't see him doing this with an ace, so I think I have the best hand right now. The river comes out a complete blank in the two of clubs, and now I need to decide on a sizing. There's $180 in the pot, and I don't think our opponent has much, so I down bet to just $55 targeting a hand like pocket tens. But out of nowhere, our opponent slides in $100. I asked the dealer if this is just a call since he didn't announce raise or put out double my chips, but after him explaining it to me, I guess if you slide out one stack that's more than half of your bet, 
it's enough to warrant a min raise. So our opponent had to add two more chips to make it $110 total. At Stones, where I played for years, if you didn't announce raise and didn't put out enough chips to double the bet, it would just be considered a call. So I'm glad I know the rule now, but now we have a decision. Check raises on the river are almost never a bluff, but with how the action went down, I'm just never folding in this spot. So given the pot odds, I stick in the crying call and our opponent chose pocket queens. I don't know what he was deciding to accomplish with that bet, but I'm not complaining because we keep things rolling after winning another solid pot. I don't make you guy mad because I know it's a this next hand is a weird one that I want you guys to comment down below with how you would have played it. I'm in the $6 straddle and two people in early position call the $6. The action player who had queens against my ace queen earlier only raises to $15 from the small blind. I want to isolate him in position and take this heads up so I raise king jack offsuit to $40. It gets folded back to the small blind who puts in the call. So with $90 in the middle, we're going heads up to a flop in position against a fun player. The flop comes out king 10 5 with two hearts, and we have ourselves top pair. Something odd happens when the small blind just donks out of nowhere for $100, which is more than the pot. I guess he could be doing this with a king or a lot of draws. I don't think I could go anywhere, especially in position having top pair with a solid kicker, so I decide to put in the call. The turn comes out the four of clubs, which shouldn't change anything, and now he decides to slow down and check. I think he could have dunked the flop, trying to get me off of a hand like pocket jacks, and now realizing that I probably have something good since I called the bet. So my logic was to bet the turn to charge all his draws and worst kings, and check back almost any river that doesn't improve our hand. So I go through with that plan and bet $100 myself. But out of nowhere, our opponent check raises to $300. The only reasonable question to ask after that is, uh, what the fuck is going on? I've never seen this line before in my entire poker career, and even though it's an action player, this just seems super nutted. So I decide to live to see another day and toss my hand in the muck. Unfortunately, we never got to see what he had, but my gut was telling me that he had two pair that was trying to play it sneaky. Like I said earlier, let me know in the comments what you guys would have done in this spot, because this one threw me off completely. We move on from that debacle of a hand and see another action player put out the $8 straddle. I look down at pocket sevens under the gun and open them to $20. I usually mix between raising or limping smaller pairs, but it just depends on the dynamics of the table. The action gets folded to the straddler, who now raises to $60. My image has been pretty tight so far, so for him to 3-bet my under-the-gun open, he must have a pretty strong hand. We're over $1,400 effective, so I obviously put in the call. We're going heads up to a flop in position, which comes out 10-7-5 with two spades, giving us middle set. Our opponent continues with a $65 bet, and it's time to raise up the price of poker. I make it $175 in position, and he quickly puts in the call. At this point, I'm putting him on strictly over pairs or Broadway flush draws. Not much else. So with $470 in the middle, the turn comes out the 10 of diamonds giving us a full house. He checks in flow, and now I have to decide on how much I'm going to wager. I decide to down bet to $125 because this 10 could possibly be a scare card to overpairs. Since we have the board completely locked up, I also want to bet a sizing that will keep his Broadway flush draws in because they're drawing dead. Once again, he quickly puts in the call and the pot has ballooned to $720. The river comes out the 9 of hearts and he checks again. I decide to bet $285 targeting all his overpairs and he says, I know I'm beat, and puts in the call. I show him the bad news, and he showed me pocket queens. We take down a massive pot with pocket sevens, but to be completely honest with you guys, I'm still getting used to playing pots this big and this deep. Looking back, I think I left a good chunk of money on the table. I think my sizings were too small, and I just need to get more aggressive. <clears throat> yeah. 
In our last interesting hand, we see two limps from early position, and I look down at the ladies, pocket queens, and raise it up to $35. This seems pretty big for a 1-3 game, but today's game is playing a lot like a 2-5, so I'm sizing up when I have good hands. The action gets folded back to the under-the-gun player, who now limp re-raises to just $68. I've seen him do this move the past two days with smaller pocket pairs, so since we're over $600 effective, I put in the 4-bet to $175 hoping to stack off when he puts in the call. But that's not what happens when he cold 5-bets to $450, leaving himself with only $150 in his stack. There's no way this player is 5-betting with anything other than pocket aces or pocket kings. Maybe ace-king. But usually people who do this with ace-king try to maximize fold equity and just jam all in. They also don't put in the min click pre-flop. So with all that being said, I toss my hand in the muck and our opponent showed us pocket aces. Shocker. After that hand, the clock struck 2 p.m., which is when I always leave, so let's get to the outro. I thought the last two sessions were insane, but this one topped it all. It's crazy what could happen when the deck keeps hitting you. So as for results, we were into the game for $700 and out for $1,977 for a $1,277 profit. I'm enjoying every second of this run good and I hope it could keep going because we're finally in the positive for the month. As for my live poker results this week, we put in some unreal lucky numbers. We played three sessions and cashed in all three, playing for 11 hours and 20 minutes and profited a whopping $2,168. As for online results, we've been running pretty bad on global poker. We played four and a half hours this week and lost $38 total. Luckily, the stakes are super small compared to what I'm playing at Capital Casino, so I don't mind using all my run bad in the online streets. So that totals our weekly profit to $2,130 after playing 15 hours and 50 minutes of poker. Hopefully we could finish next week strong and wrap up a solid profit for the month of February. As always, I hope you rung it at the tables and I'd appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button to help me reach my year-end goal of 2,500 subscribers.